Welcome to this live event from Concordium. Today we will be talking about ID, identity, uh, which is a, of course a, a natural starting place when you talk Concordium. But uh, in this specific live event, we'll be talking about uh, my soul, me ID uh, and the, uh, the developments that have been made in that regards. And, uh, and luckily, I am not completely on my own sitting here talking. I uh, have Christian with me as well. Um, short introduction. My name is Michael Breinholst. I am the director of product here at Concordium, and uh, and I'm working on with my team on a multitude of, uh, of of products, all making Concordium into a great product for people to build on. And Christian, want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you. So my name is uh, Christian Matt. I'm a senior scientist at Concordium. I uh, work on all kinds of things related to science. Um, the, for example, the MySomi ID, of course, that we'll be talking about today. It's also involved in the ID layer, things like zero knowledge proofs, consensus, and, and many other things. Excellent. Definitely some technical things we will uh, we'll get into uh, deeper in this uh, conversation here. Um, I think I'll be representing mostly the, you could say, the, the, the business side of things or the, the, the user side of things. And, uh, and luckily, we can we can cover all the really technical things as well uh, with Kristen here in the room. Um, let's uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, first, you could say order on the agenda would be to just cover when we say Concordium and we talk about identity, what are we really talking about, um, and how can how how does that benefit the world of blockchain, and how does how do we use it? Uh, specifically, of course, with my SOMI ID, which we'll get into, but also how does Concordium use it? Uh, Christian, you mind putting a few words to the uh, to the identity process or the what what's the thinking and, and how does that work? Sure. So um, the, the the first thing a user will do when he wants to to set up an account on Concordium is that he needs to to get an, an ID. That's actually some uh, unique feature also that only Concordium has, that we have this ID really built in at the protocol level. It's not kind of an add-on that you can do later, but really every account uh, must have an ID. Mm. And so that, that means basically in, in your wallet, when, when before you can actually create an account, you get this ID, which works with like an, an online process with um, an identity provider. Currently you have uh, two identity providers that you can choose from. And then it's like a process, li like when you have like an online banking or something, right? They basically scan your, your passport and you take a selfie and then they do some verification. Um, and, and that's that. It, it all works in, in your wallet. And then you basically from them get a certificate, basically, that they basically sign that they checked you. So mm -hmm. they, they will basically do the normal checks um, that they do, right? the normal companies specialized in ID things. But it's, it's not a KYC, which is the typical name you would give it, the, the process when you're onboarding, for instance, with a bank and get a bank account. They need to know who you are. In this case, they don't know who you are. Um, Concordium does not know who you are. as The blockchain doesn't know who you are. And, and no one can see it from the outside either. So um, what is it that they actually do when, when they scan the passport? Where, where does it go? Uh, and why do they do a selfie as well? Right. So, I, I mean, so, so, so if, if I pick one, one of the identity providers and send them my passport, then they, of course, know who the person on, on, on the passport is, right? Um, and um, so they, they also do the selfie to, like, this is a check that it's really me, right? I didn't just steal a passport from you, right? I, I mm. must be the same person kind of being mm. there at, at this point in time. Um, but, but, but this is kind of like one process, and when, when they check that and they are happy with, with what they have seen, then this is kind of done. And they, they, they now give you the certificate, and, and now the, the magic here is that this will not be linked to anything you then do later on the blockchain. But this was just a process to get your, your ID verified, basically. Um, and then you can open an account on, on the blockchain, and this is done using some knowledge proofs we can also talk about later, um, in, in a way such that it, Nobody knows which ID you use to open the account, but it is guaranteed that you can only open an account if you have some ID. So that, that is the trick here. Right? So, so you talked about the bank, for mm. example, right? Or, of course, the bank will know this account belongs to this person. 
Right? And here kind of these two things are like decoupled. There, there is this ID provider who kind of has seen my passport, so they know that I exist basically, but they don't know who I am on the blockchain. I can have 10 accounts, I can have one account, I can have zero accounts, I can just get the ID and do nothing. And, and they don't know that they cannot distinguish these, these cases. That's, that's amazing. I think a lot of people don't really understand how that is possible because you're used to sending data to the service provider and the service provider you now know has your data and they know who you are and whatever you do from here on they know who you are and can connect the two um, but Concordium that is actually not possible they can't connect the two they can't they can't track you afterwards so to speak um, and that's using zero knowledge proof right would you just mind uh, let's get a little technical here. Um, how does that actually work? What, what is the zero knowledge proof and how, how does it actually work in, in this regard? Right, so, so, so the basic uh, idea of a zero knowledge proof is that you want to prove something, for example, that, that you know a secret and you want to do this in such a way to convince the, the, the other person only about the truth of what you're trying to prove without revealing any additional information. Right? So for example, if, if there's a secret you know, like a signature on your name, for example, you just want to convince me that you have such a signature on some name without telling me what the name is. Mm. Right? So that, that is the basic goal. Um, and um, I mean, to, to, to make some kind of uh, toy, toy, toy real world example, you, you can think of um, if, if for example, I have two balls and I claim I can distinguish them because one is red and one is blue, but maybe you, you don't know that because you're colorblind. Right? The, the way we could do that um, in, in kind of a zero knowledge way would be that I, I give you the two balls, you show me one of them, and then you put them both behind your back and then you, you, you again show me one and I, I, I tell you, is it the same or a different one? Mm. Right? And, and, and so if I can distinguish them, then of course I, I can tell you each time. We can do this as often as you want. And at some point you will probably believe me. We repeat it a hundred times, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, so I, I can prove I can see color. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, but I don't need to tell you this is green, right? No. I, I, you know, and, and, and that's the idea, right? You, you have a kind of some, some process. And, and this would be kind of an interactive zero knowledge proof now because we are interacting. Mm. Right? So, so you basically challenge me on which ball is it? And, and then I, I give you an answer without really giving you the answer. I only tell you it's the same or not. I'm not telling you this is, this is red, for example. And, and that's a similar uh, idea here, or, or of course, with mass and, and not with, with like balls. Mm. But um, mm. yeah, so that, that would be an interactive knowledge proofs. And on, on, the, on the blockchain, we want something that's non-interactive, right? So we don't want to go back and forth mm. 100 times. And there, there are ways uh, to do that where you can basically the, the randomness you would use to now decide which of the two balls you show me instead of you having kind of this random choice all the mm. time, you, you would use a hash function to generate this randomness in such a way that I can basically stimulate the whole process for you. Fantastic. So. Fantastic. This is, it's amazing. And, and that, that you could say that goes into the, the, the core of, of uh, Concordium, meaning that those, uh, the ID that you create for yourself when you, when you uh, get your passport scanned or you use the electronic ID solutions that are out there as well, um, gets into your wallet and you're the only one that can read them and can see the content of them and hence you're also the only one able to use them. So, so truly you could say a first step of, of uh, self-sovereign identity uh, and, and definitely uh, something that we'll see more of in the future for sure. Um, definitely. Um, but we're also here to talk about uh, MySomi ID, which came out not too long ago. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting project, I find, because it, it combines or it utilizes Web3 technology in a way to actually make Web2 better. Uh, so it's not saying we should not have Web2. It's actually just saying there are places in Web2 where we believe that hey, this can actually be done better. And in this case, uh, the, the first version is that you can prove that you are actually a real person and you are actually, in, in fact, the person on this particular LinkedIn profile. Um, and, and here we use not just zero knowledge proof, we use a lot of different technologies to, to actually make this happen. Um, 
for instance, you could say that when, when, we, uh, when you come in and you want to create the proof, so to speak, um, you're actually doing it with a soulbound token. So you, you're literally writing a proof that you, in fact, are the person on that LinkedIn profile. You're writing that on the blockchain. But why is that not? I've, I've, you know, I was always told when you write stuff on the blockchain, everyone can see it and they can see it forever. Why is that not the case here? Yeah, that, that, that's a, a very good question. So, um, so basically, what, what you, you want to do in, in, uh, in this example, right? You want to create a proof, uh, for example, for in, in my case, right? I want to prove that, that I have an, an, an ID with the name Christian Matt, because that's what on my social media also the name, right? and, and then these names need to match, right? So, and, and, and this proof, of course, will now, even though it's a zero knowledge proof, it will only show my name is Christian Matt, not when is my birthday, what's my passport number and stuff. It will, of course, still tell me my name, right? which is like personal data. Mm. Um, and of course, on, if, if you are on my social media page, in, in that case, it's, it's of course fine. Then you see the name anyway. Right? But, but I only want to reveal it now for the people on the page and not, as you said, on the blockchain forever, right? Maybe I delete my, my LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and then I want this to, to be gone and, and, and not, not be there, there forever. Um, and, and that's why we basically store the things on chain only in an encrypted form. Mm. And then in this, this particular uh, use case, we will have a QR code on, on the uh, social media account. And this QR code uh, contains a key that you need to decrypt the information. And without that key, basically, you cannot do anything with the data that's on chain. So if I want to be forgotten, so to speak, I could delete my LinkedIn page, including my QR code. I could burn the, the soulbound token, uh, like, like uh, making it invalid and then I'll basically be gone. Uh, right, I mean, the, the data as such is still there on the blockchain, but no one will be able to read it. Excellent, amazing, amazing. Which, which in fact, actually, the, the ability to, 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 uh, to burn the token, as it's called, or, or you could say make a transaction that actually invalidates the data that was originally created and put on the blockchain, actually serves a beautiful purpose because it makes it possible for people to tell the whole world that their account may have been hijacked. So if, if someone tries to steal my identity by taking over my uh, LinkedIn profile, for instance, and I have a QR code, the QR code is going to show a valid proof because it is valid and, and it is me. But if I'm not in control of my LinkedIn page anymore, I can't remove the QR code. So all I need to do is actually go in and burn the token that contains the proof. Because if that's burned, then the QR code won't work. That, that's, a, that's quite quite genius. I, th I think a lot of people that have tried to be, uh, to be, you could say, having their account taken over. Uh, lately, there's been uh, talks about people on Discord being, being taken over. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I think people that have experienced that would really have liked to have had a back door on the blockchain to literally to go in and say, I can prove with my account that this is my token and I'm gonna make it invalid now by burning it. And then suddenly people can see that I was actually hijacked in the Web2 world. That's fantastic, fantastic, amazing. Um, we also use other technologies because, uh, or I would actually ask a question, um, in your opinion, how advanced is the technology that has gone into my Somi ID? Like, uh, compared to, to some of the other projects you've been working on, how, do, how advanced do you see it? I mean, I, I would say that there is no individual thing that's now like super advanced, right? but, but we are just combining essentially everything we, we have, right? The, the, the ID we already have with the zero knowledge proofs there, and we have this additional zero knowledge proofs uh, where you, we also link basically your name to the specific account, right? because, um, I mean, that, that's another thing we actually didn't talk about. Right? If, if I now copy your QR code on my profile, mm -hmm. we don't want that this is still valid, right? because now I, I, I'm, I'm not you. So we also need to be able to, to link this proof to an individual uh, page of, of the social mm -hmm. uh, media thing that, that we also do with kind of em embedding this into the context of the knowledge proof. So this, this proof will only be valid in this specific context for your mm -hmm. profile, not for other profiles. 
but that that actually that's a good thing, right? Because it protects me from the, people can't take my QR code and put it somewhere else. It won't work. Uh, yes. But if I then if I have this nasty URL with uh, letters and numbers and like no one can really read it, and I want to make it pretty, and I've already created my QR code with the ugly URL. So what you're really saying is if I go in and change that URL to something pretty, like it's uh, at the moment it is actually Michael Breinholz, um, then if I change it after I've made the code, I actually, the code won't work on my own page right? because of that. That is correct, yes, because technically it's now a different page, right, yeah. if you change your... I'm, your a, I'm now a different person that has actually stolen, so to speak, my own exactly, code. Exactly, yeah. so what you have to do in that case is you kind of revoke the old one, you burn this, this mm. old token and create a new one yeah. for, for the new uh, account. Thank you. Yeah, that's... It's a, you could say it's a, it's a price I'm willing to pay, uh, meaning that it's not often I change my URL, but it gives me a fantastic security feature that I really love. So I love that, mm -hmm. great. Um, but uh, now I said price I have, I have to pay. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't actually cost anything to create this proof. Uh, that's a new thing on, on Concordium blockchain, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we call it the uh, sponsored transaction. And essentially, it is a way, that it's a smart contract that is able to split up the transaction. When you do a transaction on a blockchain, uh, you have, you could say, you have what you want to transfer and you have the, 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 the account paying for it. And we're actually able to split that up now so that one thing is that the, you could say the, the, uh, the activity that you're doing, the interaction that you're doing, the, the signature that you're creating, to, to trigger an event, and the other part is the payment. And here we've managed to take the payment out and have someone else pay for that. How does that work? That's, that seems very complex. Yeah, that, it's actually not, not uh, that, uh, that complex, right? Because so we're essentially using smart contracts to, to store this uh, kind of information. Um, and, and, and so, so in, in general, on the blockchain, if somebody wants to update a smart contract, then you need an account that pays, right? It's, it's not, not for free. Mm. Um, but, but now, I mean, I, I can put in, in the smart contract information about you if I want, right? I can do that, right? So, so the, the way this is done, right, you would basically give me, I mean, it's, it's not me, I'm not sponsoring it, right? <laughs> but but in, in this example, right, you, you would give me the information you want on, on the blockchain and I, I can put it there. Right? So I, I basically would then, in this case, pay for you. That's the basic principle that's that's underlying here, mm -hmm. and of course that that's done in kind of a nice way with like the web web interface and so on. So you don't have to send it to somebody else and and, and so on. It's mm -hmm. all integrated. You just go to the website and click yes, I want to get this, and this is kind of it's happening behind the scene. And it's, is it it is in fact Concordium Foundation right now that is the sponsor of, of the transactions because uh, the foundation would like people to come in and try this out and see that it's actually very very cool. It's also a real problem for for Web two users. Um, but technically speaking, it could be anyone sponsoring the transactions. It, feel free to contact us <laughs> on the Telegram afterwards uh, <laughs> if you'd like to sponsor. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. <clears throat> but the technology is there yes. uh, for sure. Yeah. And that but, can, of course, also be used by, by other use cases, right? I mean, if, if, yeah. if, if you want to build some product and, and you want to have uh, also some parts free, right? You don't have to sponsor everything. Mm. Right? You can also say, okay, th th this is free, but this, this you have to pay. Um, and, and, but the sponsored transaction concept can be used by anyone building on Concordia blockchain, right? Yeah, so it, it's, it's actually a standard now uh, called SIS3. Uh, so it's uh, the third standard on the Concordia blockchain that's actually de describing the roles that you just mentioned about me being the one that's triggering the action and you being the one paying for it and, and, and actually doing it for me. Um, so, so that's fantastic. Anyone can come and build. I can only imagine abundant amounts of use cases that can be that can benefit from this and you can really play and, and create great experiences for your users it does actually trigger one question that i think we should cover in this conversation here and that is um the ability to track who's doing what because if if i'm not doing the transaction on the blockchain can people then see my account and and how does that work in relation to to privacy yeah, so I mean, in, in, in this particular example for the, for the MySumi ID, right, we, we don't want you to pay, but we still want 
your account basically to be associated with this because if you later want to burn the token, you, you, you know, you got hacked mm -hmm. and you want to revoke it, uh, then, I mean, not everybody should be able to do it, right? So only you should be able mm. to do it. So Please. we need to. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> only me. <laughs> right. So, so that, that's why we need to, to kind of link the, the, this, uh, this thing that, that uh, we put there to an account. Right? In, in that sense, this account will be linked to this specific yeah. thing. Um, but, but what's also Im Im important to, to mention here is that if you have now, say, 10 accounts, nobody can know that it's the same person having these 10 accounts. Not, mm. not Concordium, not the identity provider, uh, nobody except for yourself, of course. Mm. Um, and, and so that means uh, like you can have, for, for the MySomi ID, for example, you, you would actually reveal the name of the person owning that account. Mm, because it, that's the name on LinkedIn, everyone can see that. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and, yeah. and in, in that sense, you probably uh, don't want to use your normal account where you invest millions of, of dollars. <laughs> maybe, maybe you do, right? but that, that's up to you. But if, if you don't want that, then you just create a new account yeah. and, and use that only for the MySomi ID and, and then nobody will know anything except yeah. there's one account with the name like Michael Pringles and that's it. I think generally that is actually really good advice uh, for, for people that are, are new to blockchain that uh, it's actually a really good thing to split up in multiple accounts. I mean, in, in, in your own uh, personal economy, you would have you know, your, your salary account and you will have your savings account. You, maybe you have a budget uh, account that you use uh, and you split it up for sake of clarity. And in this case, you can do the same, but you're actually doing it, it because of privacy. I mean, the bank can see everything that you do but on, on blockchain, you actually want to split up into multiple accounts for, for many reasons and privacy being a big one in, in this regard. So, fantastic, excellent. Um, we still have a few more minutes uh, to talk and um, I believe we covered a lot about the MySomi ID, a lot about uh, how the ID in, in Concordium uh, works, but I think we should take the time to just also talk about what is coming um, because there's something common called Web3 ID, which is essentially a third generation of the identity uh, infrastructure that Concordium is, is, is part of the blockchain and part of, of, uh, of the, the package, so to speak, when you, when you build and interact on, on the blockchain. Where what we talked about in the beginning, we could call it, you could say, generation one, which is you can create a digital version of your passport, say, or driver's license or whatever it may be. Um, and you can get that into your wallet and now it's there. And in generation one, you can use it to create accounts, which is great. In generation two, which we're at at the moment, you can actually take the data and say something about yourself to use cases. So you can prove, uh, we've talked about that many, many times on this uh, show, that uh, you can prove that you're older than 18 if you want to do that. Uh, you don't have to give your exact birth date, but you can prove that you're older than 18. You can actually, if you need to uh, rent a car, you can actually give your driver's license number if you have your driver's license and it will be verified driver's license number. Um, so, so generation two is really about using it. But the third generation is a whole different game. Uh, could you put a few words to what's going to happen there? Sure. So um, one limitation in, in a sense of this uh, first and second generation is that only kind of uh, trusted identity providers can, can issue identities and, and only based on, on some uh, government documents, mm. right? So like driver's license, passport or something like that. And, and that's of course intended to be like this for this use case, because when you open an account, it should be real data, not, not uh, something random, mm. right? But now for, for the, um, the next generation, you basically open this, this up to everybody, right? So now everybody can become an identity provider. We will still have the trusted ones, of course, for, for the accounts. But now, say, university could now issue university decrees uh, on, the, on the blockchain, right? I, I could issue information about you and say, you know, I, we, we met today in, in Copenhagen, right? I, I, I could put that there. And then you could prove to people that I claim that we met and, and, and stuff like this, right? We basically open this up to everybody. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. But, uh, but why do you need a blockchain for that? I mean, it, if, if if you can just send me data, I can send the data forward. What is it that the blockchain does that is different from, you could say, what we're used to? I mean, for, for kind of issuing the, the, the certificate itself, you don't need the blockchain, right? But, but you, you can now use this in the blockchain context, right? Mm -hmm. You have the data on, on the blockchain, 
You can then now um, kind of go to some use case, for example, which can be some decentralized app, and you go there, and then you can make a proof also combining different things. Let's say you could, for example, prove that you are at least 18 based on some uh, uh, government ID, which is trusted. And in addition, you prove that you have a PhD from Aarhus University, which is now uh, proven by somebody else. Right? It's a certificate from Aarhus University. Right? Um, and, and then you can combine this information. And, and then the use cases can decide also whom they trust and what information they, they want to know from you. Right? And then maybe in addition, you prove that you are a gold member of, of some club to get some discount and stuff mm -hmm. like this. Right? Mm. So that's completely up to the use cases. And then this can all be combined in, in one package. So the use cases that wants to verify that the information that you're sending them is correct, they can actually check the blockchain and, and see proofs that what you're saying is actually true. Right? You actually have the degree, for instance. It's not often that universities take back degrees. It, it does happen very, you know, in special cases. But technically speaking, it, it, or you could also have degrees that actually expire. Uh, the CFA designation, for instance, actually expire if you don't use it uh, for a certain uh, number of years. Uh, so in this case, w you can actually, the issuer can actually invalidate the proof. It's still, you could say, residing in your Concordium wallet, but you can't actually use it anymore because the issuer of it can actually say it's no longer valid. Or the membership of anything could have the same characteristic that uh, it could expire in time, for instance. Yeah, exactly. Or, or you, maybe you want to revoke it yourself, like in mm -hmm. the MySomi example. But right? that would yeah. be also one case. If you, your account got hacked, then you want to revoke this. Um, maybe if, if you cancel some membership, you also want to, to say, OK, I'm not longer associated with them or things like that. Uh, which can also, I guess, be used for employers, for the employees. So employees can represent uh, officially with a proof on chain that this was actually issued by the right employer that we're looking for. There's a lot of opportunities. It sounds like Web3 is, is going to be, uh, it's going to be an infrastructure of the future for, for not just identity, but for personal data or uh, verified credentials. So credentials about you that are verified by someone and whoever verified that data is actually transparent to the ones that need to, that needs to know. Not to everyone, but the ones that need to know. That, that, uh, that's a lot of use cases looking for that. I'm, I'm thinking that with the, with the wave of regulation that is, uh, that is coming to the industry in, in, in different speeds in different regions of the world, then uh, this will definitely help some of the use cases that previously did not have to be regulated that will be regulated going forward. This will be a fantastic infrastructure for them to, to build on. Yeah, so definitely exciting times ahead. Yes, absolutely. Not just for my Somi ID, but also for Concordium and, and the whole industry, really. So, yeah. I think it's about time that we uh, slowly wrap up. Um, anything more to add before we, we close? I don't think so. Well, since this is a live event, we, uh, we actually decided that, uh, that after this, uh, we'll be on Telegram. Uh, where we will be answering all sorts of questions that this uh, conversation has sparked and, um, and look forward to, to chatting with you there. So thank you very much for, for listening in. Thank you.